Another type of problem that is part of many applications is routing. A core problem, known as the traveling salesman problem, shall be used to explain some important modeling aspects. The traveling salesman problem can be introduced by using a piece of scrap wood with some nails in it. The nails may represent different locations on a map that we want to visit exactly once. At the end of the trip, we want to be back where we started. A feasible solution may look like this, for example. What you see here is a round trip, a trip that visits all locations exactly once and that returns to where it started. Suppose now the distances from each location to any other locations are known. We could then easily compute the total distance of the round trip by adding the distances traveled. An optimization problem would be to find a round trip such that the total distance of that trip is as small as possible. How can we model this optimization problem? As always, if you want to give yourself a try, pause the video now. One idea to model this problem is the following. Without knowing any trip, we can number the locations from 1 to n. Let's denote the distance from location i to location j by dij, a parameter. Binary decision variables xij can then be used to indicate if we travel from location i directly to location j. On a round trip, we have exactly one immediate successor for each location and we have exactly one immediate predecessor for each location. With this observation in mind, we can formulate the following. Minimizing the total distance traveled can be expressed like so. Multiplying the distance dij by xij means that we add dij if xij is 1, and we add 0 if xij is 0. Hence we can use a sum over all combinations i and j. It will turn out to be convenient to define the distance from a location i to itself to be a very large number, that is dii is a very large number. This may surprise you, because it would be straightforward to have dii equal to zero, that is, the distance from a location to itself is zero. Doing as we do is a modeling trick that makes life easier. To describe a round trip, it's simply not important to state that we should travel from a location directly to itself. So if we choose the parameter dii to be a very large number, it wouldn't be optimal to choose xii to be one, because we face a minimization problem. If the parameter dii was chosen to be zero, you have to add extra constraints to make sure that traveling from a location to itself will not happen. As said before, in a round trip we have exactly one immediate successor for each location and we have exactly one predecessor for each location. This must be enforced by constraints.
Recall again that DII is assumed to be a very large number and because of that the objective function causes XII to be zero in an optimum solution. Think about how an optimum solution of the model given here would look like if we had DII equal to zero and positive distances otherwise. Pause the video now to find out by yourself. If we had chosen DII equal to zero and DIJ greater than zero otherwise, an optimal solution would be to assign a one to all the XII variables and a zero to all the other X variables. This wouldn't be a round trip and shows us why choosing DII being a very large number is a clever idea. To put it in other words, choosing the parameters DII the way we did is part of a correct model formulation. At this point, you should pause the video once more and think about the model given here. Is it really correct? The problem with the model so far can be illustrated using our wooden board again. What about the following solution? This solution is feasible, it fulfills all constraints defined so far. But obviously, the solution shown here is no round trip. What we see are several small trips. Each of the small trips covers only a subset of the locations, but not all. Trips like the ones shown are called short cycles. They are cycles, but they do not cover all locations. The constraints are fulfilled though. You better check this by yourself to get things straight. Our finding is that our model is not wrong, but it's incomplete. We need additional constraints that state that short cycles are not allowed. Round trips are the only cycles that we accept as being feasible. Avoiding short cycles can be modeled in different ways. We will study three alternative modeling approaches in this video. Avoiding short cycles, approach number one. A cycle with a certain number of nodes can only be constructed if the number of legs traveled equals the number of locations in that cycle. In our example, for instance, we have one short cycle with five locations being visited and five legs being traveled. So, all we have to do is to limit the number of legs that can be used for subsets of the locations that may form a short cycle. Since the locations in a subset could be visited in different orders, we must consider all possible orderings.
A few remarks are necessary to fully understand this formulation. The subsets of locations we need to consider, denoted by Q, contain at least two locations. A short cycle with one location, some xii would be one then, won't occur because we have chosen dii to be a very large number as discussed before. On the other hand, we do not need to consider subsets containing more than half of the locations because if there was a short cycle with more than half of the locations, there would be another short cycle with less than half of the locations. The latter would be forbidden though. And finally, for each subset we consider every possible sequence, a so-called permutation, of the locations in the subset. The index L equals the number of elements in Q. This is just one way to avoid short cycles. Another possibility is the following. Avoiding short cycles, approach number two. If we carefully inspect the solution with short cycles shown here, we see that we can draw a line through the locations such that some locations are on one side of the line and some locations are on the other side. In a round trip, we would have to cross that line at least once from the one side to the other. If we do not cross that line, we have short cycles. The idea of the second approach is that for every possible line that we draw, we must use at least one leg that crosses this line. A corresponding set of constraints is the following. In this formulation, Q denotes the subset of locations on one side of a possible line. As before, it's sufficient to consider subsets of sizes from 2 to n over 2. This formulation to avoid short cycles is known as the danzig falkerson johnson formulation to give credit to the authors who published this idea. And finally, let's study one more alternative to avoid short cycles. Avoiding short cycles? Approach number three. When looking at a particular round trip, it's clear what location is first, which one is second, and so on. This insight is used for the next modeling approach. We assign to each location a number that indicates the position of that location. When moving from one location to the next, the position number must increase. This simple idea avoids short cycles, because when we move along a short cycle, the position number must increase, but finally we will reach a location that has been seen before. The position number of that location must be larger than the current position, which is not feasible because the location already has a position number that is smaller than the current one. Things are easier to understand when looking at the example. Consider this short cycle. Let's start with position number 1 and move along the cycle, keeping in mind that position numbers must increase from one location to the next. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have already assigned a 1 here. But hold on, that wouldn't work for a round trip either, or would it? Well, if we take one single location out of this numbering game, let's say location number one, 
then solutions with only one cycle, round trips so to say, are feasible. Formally, this looks like so. In this formulation, pi i is the position number of node i. Note that the position number of location 1 is left out intentionally. The following is helpful to understand what's going on. Since we have n locations, position numbers up to n are sufficient. Consequently, if we add n to a position number, we can be sure that the sum is always greater than any other position number than we would need. If we do not travel from location i to location j, the variable xij is zero. In that case, the constraint simply states that pi j plus n is greater than or equal to pi i plus 1, which is always true as mentioned before. On the other hand, if we travel from location i to location j, the variable xij is 1. The constraint then states that pi j is greater than or equal to pi i plus 1. Note that plus n shows up on both sides of the constraint in this case and can be subtracted. This however means that if we travel from location i to location j, then the position number of location j must be at least one larger than the position number of location i. In the literature, this formulation is known as the miller takler zemlin formulation. In summary, we have seen three different modeling approaches to avoid short cycles in a routing context. One drawback of all these formulations is that the number of constraints gets pretty large if n, the number of locations under consideration, grows.